This is not supposed to make me emotional. What the f***? <laughs> hey guys, it's Cooley Smiley, and when you are watching this, I am now officially 26 years old. Or older, if you're watching this in the future. But as of the 21st of July, 2021, I'm a 26-year-old lady. I don't want to say I'm old. I'm not, I, I used to always think that a 26-year-old was someone who was married, about to have kids, and had their shit together. Now, I don't care for marriage, <laughs> don't want children, and I definitely don't have my shit together, and I don't know many people my age that do. Anyway, 26 years is 26, 365 days. That's, that's 26 of those. So even though I don't have my shit together, I figured this used to be a trend and I'm bringing it back. I want to tell you guys 26 things I've learned in 26 years. Is that fun? We're gonna have some fun today. And if you're not ready to have fun, then click away. Cause this video is only for fun people. See, do I act like a 26 year old? No. Is that good? Mm, probably not. Number one, nobody has their shit together at any age. I'll say it and I'll preach it, y'all. When I was a kid, I used to firmly believe that my parents knew everything. My grandparents knew everything. People at that age had to have known everything. They had to know how to be parents. They had to know how to do their jobs and do them well. If you were a professional, it meant that you were specialized in that thing. But I used to think that for everyone once you reached a certain age. And every year I get older, and every year I make friends my age and older, and every day it proves to me that no one truly knows what they're doing ever. <laughs> moms don't know how to be moms till they're moms. Dog owners don't know how to be dog owners till they're dog owners. People don't know how to do things till they do them. I think that a big lesson here is that how can we learn until we are taught? or until we try to learn ourselves. And that's with everything. I used to think that this was so scary, but it's actually brought me so much comfort. Number two, I learned my big three in astrology. I am a Cancer Moon Taurus Sun, wait, hold on, hold on, wait. I am a Cancer Sun, a Taurus Moon, and a Leo Ascending or Leo Rising, and I have no idea what that means. All of the Tauruses I've ever met in real life have screwed me over in some way, shape, or form. And that's the T. Anyway, number three. Some days do not start until you have coffee, and that's okay. <laughs> Although sometimes I'll drink my coffee and immediately fall asleep. Someone please explain that. I don't really understand why that happens. <laughs> Number four, on a less serious note, um, cheese makes me break out sometimes. Growing up, I used to love cheese. I remember there were summers when I would hang out at the pool all day with friends and I would eat like a fucking block of cheese by the pool. And then I'd have cheese pizza like every night sometimes like twice a day because you know i'm a child and i was cooking for myself with frozen meals whatever and all i drank was diet pepsi back then first of all how am i not dead second of all how dare the human body take something that you love and say mm, you know what you're intolerant to it now haha <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I miss cheese. I don't really eat it anymore because A, it doesn't make me feel good anymore, and B, it makes my skin break out. You see this chin? It's because I decided to eat pizza a week ago. <sighs> Number five. Therapy is pretty cool. <laughs> you guys know I preach therapy all the time. I know it's not accessible to everybody, and it's a gosh darn shame. I hate that. With every fiber of my being, I wish that therapy was free everywhere and accessible everywhere. I think everybody could benefit from therapy. I'm a firm believer that you can't really benefit from therapy unless you're willing to do the work and you're willing to prioritize it and understanding that you're not a perfect person. But I think people who want therapy should deserve the right to receive it. Anyway. In the past year that I've been in therapy, I have become a more whole person, a more authentic person, and a much understanding, empathetic, and happier person. And I am very grateful for therapy. <laughs> 
Number six. This kind of goes hand in hand with the coffee thing, but also it doesn't. Some people have routines and some people have habits and either way works. I am a person who operates off of habits. I've never been able to stick to a routine. It's just not how my brain works. It's not how my life has been spelled out for me. I've always had unconventional jobs, which has always changed my routine, like weekly, sometimes daily, especially now as a streamer. So when I say that I operate off of habits instead of routine, I mean that like no matter what time I get out of bed, I give my dog her food and I take her for a walk, right? Or no matter what time of day it is, if I am tired, I order or make coffee. Usually I can't do much before that cup of coffee. <laughs> if it rains outside, I am journaling. If the atmosphere is cool enough to sit on my porch or if it's raining outside, if it feels like main character energy, I am journaling. These are the ways that I've been able to stick to my habits. Routines have just not worked for me. And I used to beat myself up about this too. I used to blame anxiety and depression for not being able to have routine. And at the core of it, that might be part of it. And I always felt like I couldn't fix my anxiety and my depression without a routine or without these things that I had in my routine. But once I decided to lean towards habit forming behaviors, I've been able to create more of a routine for myself. As in, I just don't forget the things that I need to do daily, which is nice. No, it's not conventional, but it works for me. Number seven, healing is not linear. I know you guys hear this a lot. I think that it's like a trendy thing to say now, mainly because I think a lot of people are kind of heckin' woke about mental health in 2021, which is fucking amazing. But honestly, it is so true. I have experienced quite a few traumatic events in my lifetime. I had prolonged trauma during the pandemic and it's, it's the reason I'm in therapy and I could go a month on cloud nine working through my trauma, working through my issues and being able to use affirmations daily and being able to kick whatever demons are in my brain daily for like a whole month and then for a solid week out of nowhere, I could be the lowest I've ever been. And that's just because the healing journey is never linear. Sometimes things trigger you. Sometimes things take you back. And sometimes things kind of create speed bumps in your journey. And this is another thing that repeating it and reminding myself this has given me so much comfort because it's hard when you work so hard on healing and then you see yourself almost digress. But as long as you understand that you are still not the same person you were when those traumas were given to you or forced upon you, you are going to feel the comfort that I feel. You are not the same person you were when you needed to learn to heal. When that pain was forced and thrust upon you, you were somebody else. Regardless of what your healing journey has been, regardless of how you are now and who you are now, you are growing and you are learning. The more work, the better. But it doesn't always heal in a year. It doesn't always heal in a few months. But I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of how far I've come. And I'm honestly so proud of anyone else who is dealing with this, this sort of healing journey. Number eight. I love being a dog mom. I really, really do. I always knew I would love being a dog mom. I always knew that it was something I wanted. And I'll be honest, when I first got Isley, it was really hard. Adopting shelter dogs is a beautiful thing that you can do in this world. It's important to save these living creatures, absolutely, and give them wonderful lives to live but you're getting a dog that's unpredictable you're getting a dog that has triggers that you don't understand and you're getting a dog whose past you do not know and my poor baby she very clearly went through some trauma and the process of training and helping her learn her new environment and learning to trust and love me was difficult it still is difficult but it is so rewarding. I'm gonna cry. Becoming a dog mom changed my life and I'm 
grateful. Oh no, don't cry. You, you're only on number eight, bitch. Ah, anyway, here's some pictures of my dog. She is my world. If you want to see more pictures of her, I post pictures and videos of her daily on my fan house account. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine. This one blew my mind. It's so obvious, and yet it's also not, okay? Skincare and hair care comes in sets for a reason. You know how, like, if you're looking at the directions of a shampoo bottle, it'll say, for best results, use the, you know, conditioner version of this shampoo, right? Well, according to my hairstylist, that is because a shampoo and a conditioner by the same line might have different ingredients than other shampoos and other conditioners, but they complete each other. So say that one is going to heal the bonds in your hair, especially for damaged dyed hair, well, the next one is going to hydrate those bonds because maybe the healing of the bonds had to include some sort of alcohol or something like that. So the reason that you're supposed to use sets of skincare and or hair care is because each product completes each other to regulate whatever you're using it on. Which obviously, it just feels so obvious but I never, I always just thought it was just because they just, they wanted you to just buy all of their stuff. Anyway, you don't have to follow this. You don't have to buy the same product. If you have stuff that works for you, then stick with it. Everybody's different, obviously. Everybody's skincare is different. But I've learned that I have gotten the best results when I use the same brands on my face or the same lines in my hair. Number 10, and one of my favorites. I am not too much. People who think I'm too much need to find less. Say that with me. Let's, let's say that together. I am not too much. They need to find less. I am not too much. They can find less. I am not too much. They can find less. At the end of the day, we are who we are because that is what our authentic versions of ourselves is way that we feel, the way that we act, the, the way that we react to things, the way that we get excited about things that we love, the way that we interact with others in public, all of that is valid and all of that is us. Sometimes we get pushed into these different versions of ourselves and uh, into boxes to either to people please or because there's been people who have forced trauma on us or forced us into that box. But the happiest version of myself has realized that being me is nothing but correct. So if my emotions, because I am an emotional person, if my emotions are too much for someone, they can find a less emotional person. There's nothing wrong with me because of that. And this also actually leads me to number 11. We don't get to choose how others love us, but we can see how others love us and decide if that's the love we want to receive. I have learned this the hard way many times. You can love someone with every fiber of your being, but not be capable of loving them in the way that they need to be loved. If we shrink this down to something juvenile, you could say like, I only know how to love people with gift giving and physical touch, but my person needs words of affirmation and I just can't verbalize the things that I feel for that person. Well, it's their decision if that means that that isn't enough and the other way around, obviously. At the end of the day, some people are only capable of loving others in a very specific way. That doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. That doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with them. Just means that maybe you guys aren't the puzzle pieces that fit perfectly together like you had hoped. And that's okay. It sucks sometimes, but it'll be okay. Number 12 was taught to me by Bo Burnham. I wasn't alone in feeling crazy during the pandemic. <laughs> Turns out, like a lot of people, kind of went a little crazy during the pandemic. I had no idea how much I relied on social interaction for my mental health until 2020. Anyway, grateful that Bo Burna made me feel a lot less alone. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I referenced it in my last video, but he came out with a Netflix comedy special called Inside, which was a, a comedy special that he made while he was quarantined. Worth a watch. Number 13, you can simulate vacation by just changing a few things in your environment. What do you mean, Cooley? Well, 
During the pandemic, uh, I've had to learn how to take breaks for myself. And my job includes so much looking at my phone and using social media that that's not really an escape for me. Even if I'm just sitting on the couch, not streaming, not working, just looking at social media still feels like work. So sometimes your girl has to simulate being on vacation and unplugging. How do you do that, she asks. I've explained this before in a favorites video, but I'll explain it here. Sometimes it's as simple as turning on a fireplace and turning all your lights off. Sometimes it's as simple as playing classical musical in the background of whatever you're doing. Sometimes it's rearranging your bedroom so it's a little bit different so that when you relax in it, it's not the same bedroom that you went to every night after work. Small things like this have kept me sane when I have needed me time. I'm really grateful that my therapist suggested this because it has honestly made relaxing a lot easier for me. And this is coming from somebody who has a very difficult time relaxing. <laughs> Number 14, I am hot, I am sexy, and I am cute. I'm all of those things. And I'm great inside and out. Yeah. <laughs> Saying those things out loud really cements it in your brain too. Even if you don't believe those things about yourself, saying it out loud can sometimes really help. And this actually leads me to number 15. There is nothing taboo about understanding that you are sexy and expressing yourself in the ways that make you feel sexy. I have learned more about myself in the past year just from understanding that I am a sexy, strong, beautiful individual. I've spent so much of my life letting people humble me. And at the end of the day, I just think that's toxic. <laughs> if you feel the need to humble others, then you haven't opened yourself to higher vibrations. You haven't opened yourself to higher understanding of your own mental health. You haven't opened yourself to a happier life. Because at the end of the day, hating somebody because they're full of themselves just because they're a little bit confident in their appearance or in the things that they do that make them talented or make them good at their profession, that shows more about your character than theirs. Being proud of my sexuality, being proud of my character, my looks, my body, the way that it is naturally and unposed has made me stronger and more secure. I have struggled with insecurities and attaching myself to other people and needing others validation. But as soon as I've started validating myself in the ways that make me feel good and in the ways that some people have considered taboo, that's when I started finding my true self and feeling the best about myself. So if something makes you feel better about yourself, it isn't taboo. Society might say it is, but society can go fuck itself. <laughs> And now that leads me to my number 16. You can wear whatever you want. That's it. You can wear whatever you want. In some countries, there are laws, and it isn't my place to say anything on that. But in my own personal experience, wearing whatever you want is an expression of yourself. It's an extension of yourself. I consider outfit choice to be a form of art. Because no, I'm not very good at drawing and I'm not very good at painting. Sometimes I cosplay, but I'm still not perfectly talented at that. But you know what I am really good at? Putting together a nice outfit. I'm really good at that. And it makes me feel more like myself. And when I stopped holding myself back by what are other people going to think about me in this outfit? That's when I started feeling like me. And for number 17, you can wear your makeup however you want. You can wear makeup even if people have told you that you shouldn't. You can wear makeup. You want to know why? Because makeup is also a form of art. There is no right and wrong way to wear makeup. And I used to firmly believe that there were so many wrong ways to wear makeup. But as soon as I got rid of that expectation, as soon as I decided, you know what? I can paint my face however I want. If it makes me feel pretty, then I like it. That was a release. And I, I grew as a makeup wearer that day. <laughs> there is absolutely no wrong way to paint a picture. There's no wrong way to draw a picture, to make art, to create a sculpture. So why is there a wrong way to dress or wear makeup? I'll tell you why. Cause there isn't just society, once again, trying to control us. I say, nay society, you smell like soot and poo. Number 18. 
Laziness is an indicator that you don't like something or that you need a break. I am so sick and tired of the word lazy. I used to get punished growing up for being lazy. When at the end of the day, my family did not understand anxiety and I wasn't lazy. I was exhausted and I needed to sleep in and I needed breaks and I needed to understand that I didn't function the way that the rest of my family did, not because there was something wrong with me, but because my brain was just wired differently. Capitalism has taught us that we must be productive to be quality humans, but our bodies tell us we need to sleep in because our bodies need sleep. Our bodies need us to rest. Our bodies need us to take brain breaks from looking at screens all day. Our bodies don't want us to go to work from nine to five because they need a break. And people who call that laziness do not understand mental health, do not understand relaxation, and do not understand how to live life properly. And I will die on that hill. <laughs> Number 19, self-care looks different for everyone. I used to think that in order to care for myself, I had to take baths and do face masks and have spa days and go hang out by the beach and get a suntan. And while sometimes those things do help me, they aren't what helps my mental health. That's vacation, but that isn't self-care for me. For me, self-care is talking out things with friends so that I can understand boundaries I need to set. It's allowing myself to sleep in on my days off. It's sometimes taking two showers in one day because it's the only time that I feel like I can truly think. It's writing in my seven different journals so that I can get down to brass tacks when it comes to the things that are going on in my brain. Self-care is tackling this for me. Sometimes self-care is busting my ass at the gym. Sometimes self-care is sweating my ass off on a hike. Sometimes self-care is laying in bed with my dog all day. Sometimes self-care is streaming. It isn't the same for everybody because nobody is the same. We all have our interests. We all have our dislikes. We all have the things that help us relax. We all have brains that are wired in their own ways. So why would we all have the same self-care? Now learning what your self-care is is a journey, but I recommend trying to go on that journey. Okay, number 20 is a little bit existential. It brings me comfort, but it also breaks my heart. I am never going to spend a day with this version of myself ever again. Every single version of myself is the last time I'm with that version of myself. Like I'm never gonna see the version of myself that I was a year ago ever again. The reason that this brings me comfort is because it shows that the part of me that has been broke and needs fixing is in the past. And she's healing every day and she's growing into a different version of herself. But the reason it breaks my heart is because I wish that I could be with the 16 year old version of myself again and tell her that she was doing great. Anyway, it's a really big motivator for me to live life in the moment more often because I'm really bad at that. <laughs> this is not supposed to make me emotional. What the fuck? <laughs> Number 21 comes with a bit of a trigger warning, but it's for a good reason, I promise you. Clothes are meant to fit you. You are not meant to fit in clothes. If something doesn't fit, buy something that does. There is nothing wrong with your body the way that it is. Anytime that I think of something being wrong with me, I have to think back. I go, why, what's wrong? Why is this bad? And it almost always brings me back to capitalism, patriarchy, and society. <laughs> why is it trivial to be se sexy? Because capitalism wants us to be insecure so that we spend more money on things that fit us. And yes, buying new clothes is spending money. But if you are buying clothes because you are gaining weight, you are using that as a version of self-love. You're saying, you know what? I don't need to change, my clothes do. And I think that's beautiful. And I never believed in that until this year. I am learning every day how to be less and less fat phobic. <laughs> no, stop crying. My body is beautiful the way that it is. And I wish 16 year old Laurel knew that. I wish 19 year old Laurel knew that. I wish 10 year old Laurel knew that. 
But 26-year-old Laurel knows that and she is reminding herself that every day. And I'm very, very proud of her. <laughs> oh no, I'm going to have to redo my makeup. Ah! Number 22 kind of fits in with the mentality of I'm not too much. People need to find less. I actually heard this from a TikTok and I wish I could remember who said it so I could credit them. But ever since they said it, I can't get it out of my brain. You are not supposed to kill the cringy part of you. You are supposed to kill the part of you that cringes. I am a firm believer that people who say the word cringe when they are looking at others, like when they cringe at, uh, as a form of judging others, I am a firm believer that those people have not done enough looking within themselves and understanding that everyone is different and everyone has their own likes and dislikes and hobbies and talents because at the end of the day if you cringe because someone is expressing themselves your mind is closed you believe that there's only certain ways you can express yourself and i think the happiest most authentic people are the people who understand and have killed the version of themselves who cringe and not the other way around and i'm doing my best to work on that we're not 100 percent there yet but we're getting there. <laughs> Number 23 was something that is also so obvious, but it's taken me this long to actually really understand it. Sad music will make you sad. I used to love sad music. I used to binge it. I used to only listen to music that were driven by insecurity, jealousy, heartbreak, etc etc and musicals that were the same musicals that were ra riddled with tragedy let me ask you something when you listen to driver's license by olivia rodrigo do you feel happy after you sing it do you get out of the car and go ah what a great day if you do are you okay also congratulations good for you you seem happy and healthy not me <laughs> That was a good joke. I didn't plan that, but that was a good joke. I'm I'm funny sometimes. You know what? That's my number 23. I'm funny. I'm just kidding. It's not. Um, <laughs> Ever since I've decided, you know what? If I'm feeling down, I'm not listening to music that will continue that feeling. I am listening to music that is happy because no, I don't feel happy right now. But you know what? That music might get me there. Uh, excuse me. And you know what? Sometimes it doesn't always work but sometimes it does. Happy music can make you happy. So if you feel yourself constantly sad, coolly, maybe stop listening to Sour on repeat. Maybe stop listening to Inside on repeat. Would you like to know what I listened to before this video? I listened to the American Idiot soundtrack from the Broadway production. That soundtrack always makes me feel Badass. Badass. And like cool. I like feeling cool. That's why my name's Cool Lee. Cause I'm cool with a K. Anyway. Number 24. Boundaries and communication are a form of self-love. Another thing that I think gets misconstrued a lot is what self-love is, just like what self-care is. But at the end of the day, advocating for yourself is self-love. If something triggers you or makes you uncomfortable and you say, hey, best friend, bestie, can you stop doing this thing because it makes me uncomfortable or it triggers me? You are advocating for yourself. You want a better life for yourself. You want better surroundings and environment for yourself. You are loving yourself. So setting boundaries is a form of self-love. Communicating is also the same. If there's something that's bothering you, something you need to talk about with your boyfriend, girlfriend, partner, because it's just stuck in your brain and you need to talk about it, especially if it's been 24 hours and you still can't stop thinking about it. How are you supposed to love yourself if you're letting this thing torment you in private? You're not loving yourself. Get it out there. Stop thinking about it. Let it be communicated so you can work through it so that thing is no longer tormenting you. Love yourself. You wouldn't torment someone you love and keep saying things to them that make them feel uncomfortable or things that might ruin their, their headspace. So why do we do that to ourselves? So if you think that communication is difficult, 
valid. Absolutely. But understanding that when you do it, you're giving yourself a little bit of extra love that day. It could help a lot. This is another thing I'm working on and I'm not perfect at, but it has completely changed my perspective on talking things out with people. Number 25 has changed my life. Love yourself like you would love a significant other. This kind of reiterates what I say in 24, but it's also reaffirming it in its own way. The people that you love most in your life, what do you do? You prioritize them. You make them feel cared for. If something's bothering them, you try to get to the root of it. If something is making them feel insecure, you try to remind them why they shouldn't be insecure. You try to validate them and make them feel better, remind them that they're beautiful. You don't look at people you love and see ugly, useless, helpless people. So why do we call ourselves ugly, worthless, useless, dumb. Oh, that thing I did was so dumb. I want you guys to understand what I mean when I say loving yourself like a significant other. That doesn't just mean stopping the voice in your head or telling the voice in your head to shut up. It's also holding yourself when you need to be held. It's talking yourself out of anxiety attacks. It's giving yourself breaks when you need them. It's feeding yourself. Don't you love making sure that the people you love are fed? Don't you love saying kind things to people you love out loud? You should say kind things you love to yourself. This has been life-changing. Kind of holding myself sometimes, letting myself feel comforted by myself. It just grounds you and it, it reminds your body that you aren't alone because you're always going to have you. You're going to go to bed with yourself every night and you're going to wake up with yourself every morning. And people I love get fed. I make sure they're eating. And the people I love get affirmed that they are beautiful and intelligent, one of a kind. So I'm going to do that for myself too. I know this is cheesy, but once you actually start practicing it, it works and it helps. And when I'm at my lowest, I can't do these things. And that's valid. And it doesn't make me a hypocrite. It just makes me human. Sometimes we can do these things for ourselves and sometimes we are not capable. There's nothing wrong with me because sometimes I can practice what I preach. Nah, bitch. I'm just a fucking person. I'm one person doing my best and I'm proud of myself for it. And you should be proud of yourself too. I'm getting too preachy. Last but not least, y'all, number 26 has been my mantra for the past year. Life is too short. It just is. Life is too short to waste your time and energy on people who don't deserve it, who wouldn't do the same for you. Life is too short trying to make people comfortable who don't care if you're comfortable. Life is too short to do things that don't serve you, to wear things that make you feel uncomfortable, to spend time in places that don't feel authentic to you, to do hobbies because other people think that those hobbies are normal and acceptable instead of the hobbies that you really want to do. Like I said before, we were not put on this earth to be productive and make money for our entire lives. Go live your life. Go live in the moment. Turn your phone off for a day. Do something that brings you joy. And that will be self-care. And that will be self-love. I honestly needed to hear all of these things today. And I'm grateful that I decided to film this video today. I really didn't want to. I have been depressed, but reaffirming these things, saying these things out loud helps. If you guys want to make a list of your own, maybe a list of five things that you've learned that have helped you in these past few years of growing, please put them in the comment section below. I'd really love to hear which of these things I've said spoke to you and what things speak to you on a regular basis. Maybe I can learn from you. One of the most beautiful things I think that we can do in this life is listen and learn from each other. I used to take that shit for granted, but now it's one of my favorite things to do. I'm gonna go be a 26 year old, all right? Y'all be good, have a good day, drink some water if you haven't, feed yourself if you haven't, you deserve to eat. And I will see you guys on the YouTubes later, skaters. Let's celebrate birthdays together, friends. I don't know what that dance was. Oh,